Now we'll take a look at the second method of sending an OS to a data logger. Using this method, you can send the OS to a remote data logger, one that is on a telecommunications link. CR1000 and CR800 data loggers with 2 megs of SRAM cannot use this method. You will need to use the device configuration utility and be directly connected to send an OS to those data loggers. Data loggers manufactured before September of 2007 have a 2 meg memory. You can also check the memory size field in the status table. For best results, there are some steps you want to take to prepare the data logger. Not every step I show you will apply to your particular installation, nor is every step required every time, but sending an OS to a remote data logger should be approached with caution. Sending an OS using this method should preserve data logger settings and your program will remain on the data logger, but will need to be restarted. All data will be deleted from final storage on the data logger itself and on the card if you're using one. We're going to do this through the Connect screen. First, connect to your data logger and collect data. Now, go to File Control. My data logger has a USR or user drive setup, so I'm going to retrieve the data, images, and other files from it. These will be deleted by the new OS, so it's important to collect them. Next, we'll send a special program called Default to the data logger. The default program is one that you write in the CR Basic Editor. It should be just a few lines to preserve critical data logger settings, such as those for communication. See your data logger's manual for more information on the default program. Here, I've used the Set Status instruction to set the IP address. Another common instruction in a default program is the SW12 instruction. Here, it is used to turn on a phone modem. Downloading operating systems over telecommunications requires much of the available data logger memory, so I don't have any instructions that would use memory, such as the data table instruction. We're okay here because we collected the data just a few minutes ago. Now, let's go back to the Connect screen. Right-click on your data logger and click Settings Editor. This is a handy place to see settings and make basic changes. Use the drop-down to navigate to the settings you're interested in. We're going to free up more memory by setting the USR drive size to zero. And we'll apply those changes. Going back to file control, you can see that the default program is running. Refreshing the screen shows us that the USR drive is gone. Now we're ready to send the OS. Click Send and navigate to the CampbellSci Lib Operating Systems folder. The OS is an OBJ file, so we'll need to change the file type here. Here's a cautionary statement reminding you that compiling the OS will take some time and we don't want to remove power from the station. Again, we've sped up the time it takes to actually send the OS for this demonstration. Communications may temporarily become disabled. That's okay. Once communications are established again, you'll need to restart your program. Select Run Now and Run on Power Up. Remember, all data has been deleted. Select Yes. Take a look at the compile results. And we should be up and running again. Going back to the Connect screen, look at the station status and you'll see the OS version. Today, I showed you two ways to send an OS to your data logger. Using the device configuration utility, all data and programs were deleted. Settings were set to factory defaults. Using the backup and restore features, though, makes restoring settings and programs easy. For remote connections, we use file control through the Connect screen. This takes more data logger preparation, but results in settings and programs being retained. You'll need to restart your program. And remember again, all data will be deleted. Please contact a Campbell Scientific Application Engineer to discuss your application and for answers about sending an operating system to your data logger.